checking in with uh, Quincy Swiss, Vice Chair Anthony Andronico for an update on uh, how things are going in the COVID era. Anthony, nice to see you. It's good to see you again, Joe. Thanks for having me on. Sure, pleasure. Um, you know, uh, we're recording this on uh, Friday, October 16th, and one uh, benefit I see is remote learning. There's a water main break in Quincy, so all the kids are talking. Yeah, there is. Uh, you know, the superintendent uh, gave us a call this morning on, on the school committee just to let us know what was going on. And, uh, you know, I have full faith in our, our public buildings team that they'll get that resolved um, and, and we'll be back in for Monday. But, you know, never a dull moment, uh, it seems, these days. That's so true, because just yesterday started uh, 4 through 12 hybrid, right? That's right. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited, actually, to have, you know, students back in the classroom, you know, in grades 4 through 12. You know, we, we took a, a high, excuse me, a, a phase in approach uh, to rolling out our hybrid, one that was commended by Governor Baker and uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education there um, for that plan to get students back in the classroom. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm very excited to see kids back in. And so far, you know, feedback has been mixed. I think there's never going to be a smooth transition. And obviously we have some uh, scheduling challenges, but I have full confidence that that's going to be worked out in the next few days. And, um, you know, hopefully in, you know, not too distant future, we can get even more kids back in the classroom. Um, you know, I, I understand a lot of folks have concerns about going in. Um, but at least so far, what we've seen from uh, the numbers that have been given to us by Health Commissioner Ruth Jones, uh, anytime QPS has had a uh, COVID-19 case, uh, those that are within close contact have been told to go home, and it doesn't appear as though uh, we've had any spread within uh, our schools. Uh, in fact, we've only had one case in the last two weeks of, uh, of a staff member, um, so that, that's really good news for, for Quincy. Have you talked at all about um, what might happen if Quincy goes into the red category? Yeah, we, we went over that a little bit with uh, Health Commissioner Jones. I think one of the, the difficult things about this is one, you know, we're going through it for the first time, uh, but two is it, it, all, it all depends. So if Quincy goes in the red, uh, but it's clear that that is not from, uh, you know, from within our schools, or it's clear that the protocols we have in place are absolutely working and it's safe to go in the schools and let's say someone does have a case and then we're, we have high confidence that it won't spread from there. Um, you know, it's different territory. I think it, it, it unfortunately all depends. I'd love to give a very easy answer. Um, but as we said from the very, very beginning, we're going to listen to our local and state uh, public health officials. They're the ones that know best. Um, you know, I, I'm a school crew member. My background is not, uh, I don't have a medical degree. So we're going to continue to listen to them and uh, listen very closely to their recommendations. And the uh, option of fully remote learning still exists? Yeah, so, it, you know, remote learning, um, you know, whatever we decide for, our, you know, the back to school plan, uh, getting more kids in the classroom, uh, remote is always going to be an option for, for our students and their families. And, um, you know, juggling two different sides uh, in person and then remote teaching has presented some challenges, you know, regarding staffing um, and making sure the schedules fit just right. So uh, it's not easy, but we're still trying to tinker with that. Uh, administrators are, principals are, make sure that works. Um, so, I mean, in, in general, the, uh, you know, the remote learning seems to be going a lot better than in the spring. Yeah. So, any uh, idea about how many students are opting hybrid as opposed to fully remote? Yeah, we got those numbers uh, at, at our last meeting. About half of students uh, have selected remote. Uh, the other half have done hybrid or the, the full in-person if they, they categorize as uh, high-need students per phase one. So it's a mix. Uh, we did see from two weeks ago to uh, this past Wednesday, we had a little bit of a dip in those that uh, wanted to go back in, in hybrid. Um, my, my guess is difficulties presented by the schedule and uh, numbers in general in Massachusetts uh, ticking up a little bit. You know, we've got a lot of communities right around us uh, that are in the red. 
Quincy's still in the yellow, which is good news. Um, so, but we're, we're about at 50, 50 uh, at the moment. What does an actual, you know, hybrid classroom look like, Anthony? How many, how many kids are in there? How are they seated? Where's the teacher seated? You know, could you give us a little picture of that? Yeah. So in general, you know, the teacher will be right at the front of the classroom by where the board typically is. Uh, and that's generally where, where they'll stay. Um, the, the regulations from the state, you, you're not allowed to have more than 12 uh, people uh, within, within the classroom at one time. Uh, all the desks are spaced six feet apart. Uh, everyone has to wear a mask. And, uh, um, you know, after you get up and leave, you wipe down the desk uh, in, in your chair to make sure that, you know, whoever's coming in after you, uh, in particular at the high school level, um, that that area is disinfected uh, as well. So that's generally what it looks like. Um, it's, they're very small class sizes. You know, they're generally around seven or eight students because if you got two cohorts and you're already down to 50%, you know, you're talking about 25% of a classroom. Um, they're very small class sizes right now, uh, which, which is good news, uh, I think, <laughs> for right now. Um, so that's, that's generally what a, what a classroom looks like. And we actually talked with Commissioner Jones um, and, the, and um, you know, our, our head nurses there, just about Rita Bailey, about what, uh, what do you do when you have a confirmed case? And generally, if you are defined as a close contact um, to someone that you know, has coronavirus, then you'll be asked to quarantine or, or isolate. Uh, depending on the situation. So a close contact is defined as someone who is within six feet of a positive COVID individual for more than 15, for 15 minutes or more uh, with or without a mask. So if you have a mask or you don't have a mask, if you're within those six feet for more than 15 minutes, you're a close contact. Um, so as of right now, you know, we haven't had to have a lot of folks be defined as a close contact which again is recommended by uh, state and local officials about what to do. So that's the good news. Um, and I think it also lends a little light. I, I did ask this at the meeting, you know, how do we get more kids in the classroom? Is three feet okay? I remember at the beginning uh, when we were talking about in-person plans, that was the state guideline. If you want to do full in-person, three feet. Um, and essentially from there, the idea is if you do that, then all of those students around a positive individual, uh, we're talking six people at that point, would have to uh, quarantine and it would potentially shut down the entire class. So there's not an easy answer to, <laughs> to any of this, um, but we'll continue to monitor it as we move forward. Yeah, I know you're familiar with that. Uh, we've seen some of the uh, institutes of higher education <laughs> Uh, required uh, testing. Is that something that's been talked about in uh, the Quincy Public Schools? Yeah, I know the state has recently uh, uh, made more rapid tests uh, available if, you know, if your district would like to pursue that. We're in the, the initial discussions uh, of that at the moment. I, I would expect that we, we bring that up and talk more in depth at our next meeting about it. Um, but one of the things that uh, I found to be interesting that uh, Ruth Jones has brought up over the last few weeks is the reliability of rapid tests, um, the antigen tests, and that they're not as reliable uh, as a PCR test that can usually take a day or two. Um, in addition, you know, she's mentioned that, uh, say things like taking, you know, your temperature at the beginning of the day, uh, again, not as reliable as actually doing a test. So. You know, it, again, it's it's never easy, but it's one of the things that we're we're at the very least looking into because you know I think you have to look into everything uh, when it comes to getting kids back to school. Yeah, uh, technology-wise, uh, does everybody have a computer that needs one to do remote learning and teaching? Uh, yeah, we're we're just about there. Um, you know, I know we we were made an investment of over two million dollars from the Federal CARES Act. Uh, you know, Mayor Coke was. Uh, generous enough to allocate that funding at, at the behest of the, uh, the school committee. And, you know, we were able to get laptops for all of our teachers to administer, uh, you know, the remote learning from whether it be home or within the classroom. And we purchased uh, enough Chromebooks, I believe it was 7,500 Chromebooks 
uh, so we could have a one-to-one -one ratio of Chromebooks for students in grades five through 12. Uh, you know, with the pandemic and a national shortage of the materials needed to make those, uh, those Chromebooks, uh, we're a little behind on receiving them. Um, you know, we did submit the order right away. Uh, I, I want to say in late April after we got uh, the, the funding. We received 2,500 Chromebooks um, a few weeks ago now. And we already had a few in stock, uh, I want to say 1,100 or 1,200 uh, within QPS. So at this moment in time, we've loaned out 3,500 Chromebooks uh, to students that had indicated at the beginning that they needed a Chromebook or did not have access to a computer. Um, so we're hopeful that at this point in time, every student that, uh, that needs a Chromebook uh, and access to the internet has it. Uh, if you don't and you're at home and you know someone that, that doesn't, I'd strongly suggest reaching out to uh, the main office and the superintendent's office and, and you know, they can help um, connect you with those resources. We want to make sure everyone is set. Um, but I am very much looking forward to having the rest of our order in uh, so that everybody can have, uh, in grades 5 through 12, can have, have their Chromebook. Yeah. Has um, access to the internet been uh, an issue at all for some students? Yeah, it, it has been. Um, you know, you're not able to, to reach everyone. Everyone's home situation is, is a little bit different. And uh, one of the things that, that Quincy had done, just trying to think outside the box a little bit, is uh, have students go to the uh, computer labs at uh, each of the high schools, respectively. Um, and, you know, so we're clear, the individuals, or the, rather the students that are utilizing that as a resource, uh, are the ones that had indicated on the survey uh, in the beginning that um, they, they did not have access to this technology. So it's, it's not students that have it at home, it's those that are genuinely in need, uh, you know, that, that just need a little extra help getting those resources. Okay, and those students um, would be comfortable with, with the hybrid learning model, I'm assuming, because they're kind of in, in the building. Yeah, so they're, they're in the building, uh, it's a little wonky, so they're in the building, but uh, at that point, they are remote students. Okay. So even though, I, even, even though they're essentially, it's, um, you know, you're utilizing the computer lab, uh, there's a proctor there to make sure that, you know, everyone's following the, the protocols, um, and they're doing what they need to to, to be in class and, and be present. So okay. I know it's a little different, I understand make a, a ton of sense to be in the school, but you're a remote student. Uh, I just think that goes to show you how difficult uh, and how many challenges there really are when trying to get, uh, get everyone back to school. Yeah. How's the um, transportation situation uh, working out? I know you had to push that out an extra uh, half mile because of the uh, spacing requirements uh, on the buses. Right. Uh, for the most part, it seems to be okay. Um, you know, we, we contacted the families uh, within you know, a day or two after passing that policy. Um, and, you know, for the most part, folks were, were very understanding and, you know, we're appreciative of their understanding. And for the families that, uh, you know, did continue to have a need, I know, as we always do, uh, you know, QPS worked with those families to make sure that they were, were taken care of and, and able to go to school if that's what they wanted to do or help set up a plan. Um, so for the most part, that seems to be going well. Again, the, the transportation guidelines, uh, I believe it's 40% capacity. Windows have to be open. Everyone has to be six feet apart and you have to wear a mask uh, the whole time. So it, uh, it certainly looks different. Um, but uh, I, I think for the most part, we're, we're okay in, in that regard. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if all things stay as they are right now, Anthony, uh, how long does this particular model last? Yeah, that's what we were trying to figure out, at, at least briefly at the last meeting, uh, in, in particular, I had asked, you know, when is it okay to go from six feet to three feet? Um, so that's part of it. You know, another part is going to be, let's say we do, we do that, um, and we can get more students in. Will the families that are in hybrid uh, right now at the moment, is that something they're still going to want? You know, would, would they want to go from the six foot distance to the three foot distance? And then you could end up with a situation where uh, only 25% of your kids 
want to do in person and 75% now want to do remote. Um, and if the whole goal is to get more kids in the classroom, then you're going backwards. Um, so it's, it's a little bit tricky. Um, you know, I'll continue to listen to, to Ruth Jones and, and our state, state guidelines. Um, but we, we want kids back in the classroom. You know, they learn better in class. That's very clear. Um, you know, remote learning can be uh, very difficult. I think, as you know, Zoom fatigue is very real after you have a Zoom meeting over and over and over again all day for five days a week. That's a lot. It, it's, it's very tough. Um, and it, it's really tough for, for our little kids, too, and, and our high school kids as well. Um, but we're trying to get more kids back in the class and, and we'll continue to listen to, uh, to public health officials on how we can best do that. Yeah. Do you anticipate maybe another round of um, surveys, you know, before any, any changes are made? Yeah, I, I would suggest so. Um, you know, personally, I'm, I always prefer getting feedback from the public uh, before you make a decision like this. Um, you know, it's good to know where families feel, uh, how, how families feel and where they stand. Um, and that makes, you know, for, for better public policy just in general. So, you know, I'd strongly suggest that we, uh, you know, have another round of surveys I know our families are getting a little tired of all the surveys, but we appreciate it uh, because we do need need your responses to make a good uh, good decision uh, on the on the school committee there, and uh, we'll see what we get back, and and then we can we can go from there. All right. Anything else we should touch on right now? Do you think anything? I don't think right now. It's, it's always good to see you, Joe, and uh, I'll see you in another two weeks. Yeah, that was my next question. Is it still sticking to the, the two week schedule? Yes, another two weeks. Uh, next meeting is on Wednesday, October 28th for those folks at home. And just as a reminder, uh, if anyone needs to, to reach me, you know, you, I can be reached uh, by email at anthonyandronico at quincypublicschools.com. And if you're curious about anything that's going on uh, in QPS, you know, you can always log on to uh, the city, the, the website, quincypublicschools.com. Great. Thanks so much, Anthony. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.